so I think I can wrap up then for the day. Um, what we heard this morning was that um, imagination is more important than knowledge, because knowledge is always limited and that Im imagination really drives um, evolution. I think in Eupraxia we have a lot of imagination, we have a lot of ideas, and uh, I think we have now more than ideas because we are very close to our CDR, and the next step that has to follow after imagination is to have targets. Not just any targets, uh, what any project manager will tell you is that you have to have smart targets, so targets that are specific, measurable, that can be achieved, that are realistic and that are time bound. And I guess probably the most um, famous smart target of all times is the one related to the man landing on the moon from JFK, where he said specifically what they wanted to do, namely bring not only a human to the moon, but also bring them safely back home. In the accelerator field, there is already a similar um, kind of smart target, which to me is the most famous one of all times, and that's the one that brings us back to the northwest uh, of England and the starting of all accelerator science when Rutherford in 1927 said that we require that apparatus that gives us a potential of the order of 10 million volts, which can be safely accommodated in a reasonably sized room and operated by a few kilowatts of power and we also require an exhaust tube capable of withstanding that voltage. And he said, I don't see any reason why such a requirement cannot be made practical. Remember, at that time, people were still harnessing high voltages via metal rods in the Alps. Um, so it was a very different time as compared to what we see today. So in Eupraxia, as I said, I think we, have, um, we had a, a vision a few years ago. I think that vision has now turned into a number of, I would say, parallel challenges, projects with more or less specific smart targets. In some areas, we have something very similar. So I guess for the laser development, picking up on Christina's talk just before, I think we can say almost the same thing. What we require is the design and construction of a laser capable of delivering pulses with a duration of 100 femtoseconds and an energy of 100 joule at a repetition rate up to 10 hertz, and then a user facility that is built around this technology in the next decade. So combining the moon landing and what Rutherford said, I think in Eupraxia we have this, and we have much more because uh, the, the laser-driven scheme is, of course, not the only one, uh, but that's um, one of the major development lines within Eupraxia. Um, so we've seen that um, international collaboration is extremely important, and I guess we are all grateful by the funding that the European Union has provided us so far. It brings us together, it really allows, that, allows us to have the dialogue, not only between our work packages, but in events like the one today, also mit, with a much uh, bigger um, public, really taking the message out about the importance of science. Um, so um, I think we'll build up on that spirit, and we are all very motivated um, to turn Eupraxia into reality. Uh, to me, I think what last is to thank all of you for joining in today, in, uh, in, in particular the Eupraxia, uh, collaboration for being here um, throughout the week and, and joining for the collaboration week. My own group um, for making the hands-on demonstrations today possible and um, in particular the project team which really did the magic behind the scenes. And finally, um, just something when you go back home, the best science is ranked and yeah, take your own view on this. Thank you very much.